Hey, what's going on guys? This is the Elemental Maker and today I'm going to be going over the disassembly of the GO704 CNC milling machine uh, in preparation to convert it over to ball screws. And I'm also going to quickly cover uh, milling the pocket for the x-axis ball screw and also milling out the, uh, I guess extending the slot on the base of the mill so that you can maintain your full 7 inches of wide travel. Alright, so the first step here was just to remove the uh, chip cover there, saddle cover, whatever that is. Pretty easy, just two bolts. You don't have to remove the back ones. Then moving on, um, this is actually the removal of the column is something you probably don't have to do if you don't plan on clearancing or uh, extending the base slot. Um, I wanted to maintain that full 7 inches of Y travel though, so in my opinion it was worth it to just remove the column and uh, later on in the video here you'll see that I actually um, basically just made a, an additional 1.75, 1 and 3 quarter inch uh, extension to that base slot towards the front of the mill. So those bolts were in there pretty good on the column. They were a bit of a bear to get out, and it, it took quite a bit of uh, force there, a bit more than I would have liked to use. But that is important for rigidity, and you don't want to uh, you know, have your column jiggling about while you're trying to mill stuff, so I certainly see why they're in there so tight. You can see there I put a little piece of wood under the column. That was so that when I was removing the last screws, um, the column wouldn't just fall, and uh, that, that worked out pretty nicely. It was just a cheap little piece of poplar I think I had from Lowe's or something, just laying around some scrap wood. So I'd recommend doing that if, uh, you know, you care for your fingers. So with that removed, I just started uh, cleaning up the base of the mill there a little bit. You can see I was scraping off some of the paint. Grizzly... Well, I guess it wasn't Grizzly, but uh, Wan Hung Lo in China really put heck of a lot of paint on this thing and paint in places it should not have been. So, uh, probably worth it to do a little paint cleanup. I don't know if the travel will actually go back there and touch the paint, but uh, if you're going to do something, might as well do it right. So, just wrapping up there. Moving on to the removal of the X. This is all pretty uh, basic, basic stuff. So just using a vice grip to take out that little key. And loosening up the gib screws there. Now I probably should have went ahead and totally removed the gib screw. Um, it probably would have been a bit of a better option. Because as you can see later in this video, the uh, when I removed the table, the gib screw kind of just flies out. Um, it didn't get nicked or anything, so that's good. But, um, you know, there's an off chance that it could. So I'd recommend removing your uh, x-axis gib first. And another thing, guys, make sure you label your gibs. Um, I wiped them down real good and then used some, uh, I, some sort of Sharpie that's made for oily surfaces. And uh, just, you know, marked X-axis gib and uh, later on the Y-axis gib. Because you don't want to get those mixed up. They are supposedly hand scraped to match each surface. I don't know how true that is and they probably have some poor, you know, six-year-old Chinese kid hand scraping them. But, uh, you know, keep stuff where it belongs at least. So here you're about to see the gib pop out. That table's pretty heavy, so make sure you get a good hold on it. And there's just Chinese cosmoline goo on everything in this mill. So I'm kind of glad I got her all apart, able to clean it all up, and uh, you know get some proper whey oil on everything.
So you can see here very few of the parts um, that I'm taking off here will actually be used with the Arizona video kit. Uh, it came with pretty much everything I needed to replace it, even the X table uh, side covers, I guess they'd be called. So uh, that's that's a really nice thing about the kit. It comes with virtually everything needed. So here's the Y-axis gib. Just getting that out of there. Again, make sure you label them. I've, you know, read up on all the forms that, uh, you know, some people occasionally get them mixed up and then they're running into all sorts of binding issues and whatnot and uh, just don't want to run into those troubles when it's so easy to prevent. And there we have the fresh base. So you can see here I'm just getting a little ruler using the uh, existing slot as a uh, template there and the extension I did there only went 1.75 inches that ended up being plenty of clearance for me so I brought it over to the old uh, Burke Powermatic mill right and just started slotting it out making the final cuts here good old high high speed steel So after a pretty thorough cleaning of all the oil and uh, cutting oil I used on it, definitely, you know, get some primer on there. Don't want, you know, any rust accumulating or anything like that. So then moving on to the saddle of the mill, just making the slot there so the ball screw has clearance. And that's about it. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully found it uh, helpful in your own conversion. Uh, stay tuned and make sure you subscribe for the next round of videos where we're actually going to convert uh, the entire thing over to ball screws. We're going to reassemble the whole thing and uh, get it all working. So as you can see here, I actually have it fully assembled. Just got to get the video up and uh, get that all good to go. So. If you uh, have any questions on the conversion, you know, feel free to drop a comment. I'm always happy to help. If uh, you know, if you like the but or if you like the video, <laughs> please hit the like button. If you disliked it, um, hit the dislike button. Um, and if you want to get more, subscribe. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you liked it. Have a good one.